For more than a year, one of my favorite high-yielding dividend stocks has been under constant attack by both equity research groups and short sellers. Since mid to late 2022, Arbor Realty Trust has been on a non-stop roller coaster ride as this company has been under a lot of scrutiny. A decent number of people have been betting on a collapse of both the industry they operate in and Arbor Realty stock itself. And as an investor in this company, it's been a rather uncomfortable experience this whole time. So in this video, I'm going to go deeper into why people have been predicting doom for this company, how they've been wrong up to this point, and why I'm not panic selling. The panic surrounding Arbor Realty Trust has to do with the core of their business. This company provides several different services, but the core of their business is providing loan originations and loan servicing. Arbor Realty has two main segments, which are their structured business and their agency business. Their structured business segment provides a variety of different loans, most of which are bridge loans, but they also provide preferred equity and mezzanine loans. Bridge loans are short-term loans that are used until a person or a company secures permanent financing or pays an existing obligation. These loans are usually very short-term and come with very high interest rates. Arbor's agency business issues and sells mortgages through government-sponsored enterprises. A GSE is an entity created by Congress with the goal of enhancing the flow of credit to specific sectors of the U.S. economy. The two main GSEs that exist are Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, and Arbor services and issues mortgages through these two enterprises. ABR is structured as a mortgage REIT, which is a sector that doesn't have a great reputation. Some of the larger players in the MREIT sector, including Annaly Capital and AGNC Investment Corporation, have a long history of disappointing share price performance as well as dividend cuts. But that's not the reason why some people have been so pessimistic about Arbor Realty. The biggest issue people have with this company is because their main focus is on the multifamily sector, which is defined as any residential property with more than one housing unit. So that would include things like apartment complexes, but it would also include duplexes, triplexes, and quadplexes. Over 85% of ABR's loan originations are bridge loans that are for apartment complexes and other similar property types. And both investors and these equity research companies have been betting that this sector is going to collapse, much like people have been predicting that the office sector is also going to collapse. To give a general overview of the attacks ABR has suffered specifically, I think things really took off after the Ninji short report came out about a year ago. Last March, a company by the name of Ninji Research announced that they had opened a sizable short position against Arbor Realty, claiming they had evidence that Arbor created secret holding companies which held a portfolio of bad mobile home properties, or as they described it. They also claimed the company had been misrepresenting their financials for years and ultimately they estimated a median downside of 52% of their stock share price. The report included other allegations, but when it was released it caused ABR's share price to fall 25% over the course of a week. I released a video shortly after the report came out in which I denounced it and revealed that I had bought even more shares of Arbor Realty stock. Ultimately, the report was proven false and ABR fully recovered a few months later. But in November, another major short report was released, this time by a company called Viceroy Research. This new report slammed Arbor Realty for issuing their bridge loans, which are also floating rate loans, and they claimed that the borrowers were struggling to repay them as interest rates soared. Viceroy's report came with a new batch of allegations and caused ABR's share price to fall by over 11%. The company behind this report, Viceroy, has been fined five times in the last three years for making false accusations against companies. Moreover, Viceroy's website looks eerily similar to Ninji's website, and the authors of the Ninji report have continued to remain anonymous. Following the release of this short attack, I made another video criticizing the report. After Viceroy released this article, Arbor's stock again fully recovered. However, during the past couple years, the short interest against ABR stock has only continued to increase. The short interest of a stock represents how many people have opened short positions against a company. Much like how investors can drive up the share price of a stock by aggressively buying it, shorts can aggressively drive down the share price of a company in the exact same way. Just by looking at the one-year share price performance of ABR, we can see it really has been a roller coaster ride for their stock. It suffered several attacks by other companies besides Ninji and Viceroy, and any major news regarding the real estate market has sent their stock rising or falling depending on the news. Following all this drama in 2023, Arbor Realty just released their latest financial results on Friday, and also came out with their end-of-year results for 2023. So what were the results of their latest financials? Definitely not good if you've been betting against this company. On February 16th, Arbor Realty announced they earned non-GAAP earnings per share of $0.54, cents, beating expectations by $0.09 cents per share. This comes out after the board of directors openly admitted that they expected this quarter to be more difficult for them. They also revealed that they earned revenue of $103.5 million, which they beat expectations by $5.93 million. 
Their 54 cent distributable earnings per share translates into their stock having a 79.6% payout ratio, which is quite a bit better than average for mortgage REITs. Other M REITs like Annaly Capital typically have payout ratios in the high 80s to the 90s. Following their latest financial results, Arbor Realty's share price soared by over 6% following two months of consistent pessimism. Obviously, if there is a multifamily collapse in the process, this company just hasn't suffered from it, and they certainly don't appear to be on the cusp of a complete collapse. According to Freddie Mac's 2024 Multifamily Outlook report, they made the following statement. The multifamily market saw performance slow in 2023, brought on by the uncertainty in the economy, along with a high level of new supply entering the market. Rent growth saw meager gains while occupancy ratings continued their downward trend. The multifamily supply pipeline remains elevated with peak completions expected in 2024. The high rate of new supply will continue to moderate potential rent gains. Rent growth is expected to be positive in 2024, but below longer run averages. So judging by what's in this report, Freddie Mac, again a government-sponsored enterprise, believes the future for the multifamily sector is looking pretty good in a couple important areas. Not only are there still a lot of new apartments under construction, and some of them will need bridge loans, but the demand for them continues to be very high. Although landlords aren't expected to see much growth in rent prices, the fact is Arbor Realty should have plenty of lending opportunities out there. This will allow the company to be more selective in terms of who they lend money to, which can mean they'll only lend to companies with the best track records or are willing to offer better deals like offering more collateral. Additionally, the Federal Housing Finance Agency as well as the Federal Reserve also came to a very similar conclusion. They all believe the demand for multifamily projects will continue to grow, which should be good news for Arbor Realty. Now, I won't sit here and pretend that Arbor Realty is a totally safe stock. The fact is, Arbor is operating in an industry that is facing challenges. One way this is evident is by looking at their dividend history. Since 2017, ABR has raised their dividend almost every single quarter, so a handful of investors were concerned when the company didn't increase their dividend back in November, as well as in their most recent quarter. In situations like this, I find value in listening to a company's latest earnings call. According to Arbor Realty CEO, as you can see from this morning's press release, we had another outstanding quarter and closed out an exceptional 2023. In fact, 2023 was one of our best years as a public company despite an extremely challenging environment. In regards to their challenges, Kaufman said, On our last call, we gave guidance that the fourth quarter of last year and the first quarter and second quarter of this year would be the most challenging part of the cycle. We are in a period of peak stress and expect the next two quarters to be challenging, if not more challenging than the fourth quarter. As a result of this environment, we are experiencing elevated delinquencies. One of the many reasons this is occurring is certain borrowers are taking the position that they will default first and negotiate second, which is not a strategy that works well with us. Ultimately, based upon this earnings call, the management team seemed rather surprised by their last quarter, but Arbor is experiencing an increased number of delinquencies on their loans. This is pretty common among mortgage REITs right now, but the longer interest rates remain high, the greater the risk of more defaults occurring. As of the making of this video though, Arbor Realty isn't exactly suffering as they're still reporting much higher than expected earnings in Q4. Still though, the reason they didn't increase their dividend was just out of an abundance of caution. So in the end, I wouldn't say that I'm worried about this company at this time. Based upon what I've come across, there's still plenty of opportunities that exist within the multifamily sector, and the company continues to post good financial results. I don't have an issue with the board being a little more cautious right now, especially since a lot of REITs have already had dividend cuts since interest rates started increasing. My plan going forward is to just remain invested and enjoy the dividends being reinvested. But with that being said, that's going to conclude today's video. If you're interested, feel free to check out my Patreon where you'll find an Excel sheet of all of my holdings updated monthly. Plus, it'll give you access to our Discord channel where we discuss higher yielding types of investments. With that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video. If you liked what you saw, then feel free to hit that like button below and click subscribe if you want to see higher yielding investing strategy content. Again, thank you all so much for watching today's video and until next time, take care.